Um, so this is Sorvodia Farms, and we are in Pomona, California. Um, we're a, a urban farm, you know. We're on the outskirts of of LA County, and uh, we got a little over a half acre here, really long and and kind of skinny lot. Right. Um, and we've been through like a number of iterations here at, in terms of you know what our farm does and what we focus on. Currently, our model it, on the land here is that uh, we are a, a nursery that focuses on helping people get started with growing food at home. So we carry, uh, and that's what you're seeing behind me right now, um, we carry all types of primarily edible plants from fruit trees, to herbs and vegetables. We carry only perennial. So that's one unique thing about, about us. We, focus, we only do perennial. We, uh, we, when people come in, we really help them get started with, you know, walk them through. Cause a lot of people, you know, they go to other nurseries and uh, you know, people are just trying to sell them plants without giving the people any understanding about how plants grow and like what they need. At that level, it's almost a commodity item versus as I walk through here, we're grafted and the signs here, I want to get to the signs because the <laughs> signs are just, I, I love it. But you can tell just by walking around that each thing has really been cared for, which is completely not what you have when you're at a, a wholesale type nursery. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so we, you know, we try to, we try to raise our plants in a, in a special way so that people can, you know, actually have a good start with, with gardening and we're not just trying to like sell them plants that we're pretty sure are going to die and they're going to come back and get more. You know, so, so that's one part of what we do. Um, the other part is just creating a, a space that our community can come to, um, can feel, uh, you know, can relax, can enjoy time outside, and enjoy time under the shade of trees, you know, picking fruits, taking classes and doing workshops, or even just, you know, taking a nap. Um, especially here in LA, you know, our access to like rich public green spaces is so limited. Um, a lot of our parks are just, you know, lawn with like dying trees. Um, and so. And it's funny cause it's right across the street. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we haven't, I haven't got to do a, a proper farm interview in a, in a while. So if folks hear some background noise, hey, <laughs> deal with the background noise. Cause I wish you could, I wish we had smell a vision because the, <laughs> the, everything here is just, to me, very fragrant coming from Texas. But I mean, right across the street, they're working on the ball field yeah. in a park. Yeah. And you have what normally would be, oh, it's a nice park. But then you come behind the gate and it's like paradise. So, <laughs> so I, I would imagine that your folks that come out, this has to be a fresh air, breath of fresh air for them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and that's, you know, one, one thing that we focus on. Um, in terms of the development of the space is, you know, how can we give people an experience that they really have a hard time finding, you know, anywhere else, and especially in the city, right? Like, you know, when you think, when people in the city are like, are thinking about, oh, I need to go and find a place where I can just, you know, be in the trees and like be in the shade and, and relax. And they think about, oh, I got to drive like an hour to go to some, you know, national forest or something. Uh, we want people to know that. Uh, just, just so we're clear, you're very lucky that you only have to drive an hour for a national forest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so it's not, it's not yeah. too bad. Not yeah, too bad. Not, I know, I know, I know, I know. We are very lucky in that way. Um, but you know, even here, uh, like in the city of Pomona, I mean, a lot of people don't have cars. Right. You know, public transport is not that great. Um, so to be able to actually just walk down the street or take a bicycle or or you know, take a short car ride and and come to our space and get that same feeling that you were looking for by you know wanting when you wanted to go to the to a national forest, you can get that same feeling here. And actually, you know, what's unique about here is you know if you come in the mulberry season, you can pick fresh three inch long she Pakistani was me mulberries. About that, man. I was so excited. <laughs> like just my wheels. I get to a place and my wheels start turning about. Oh, I could do this and do that. So yeah, I would imagine that would be something to look forward to. But I mean, looking around, everything would have a season to look forward to. And it looks like it could be week after week. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we're trying to do with the new development that we're working on right now is, you know, we've taken out a lot of the 
old annual vegetable row crop beds that we've had and we're putting in a, just a wide variety of fruit trees. So we're gonna have, you know, well over a hundred fruit trees here and we were gonna have fruit throughout the season. Um, so the idea is that, you know, you'll be able to come in at any time during the year, pick some fruit, you know, we're thinking about actually one of the things that we might actually pre prepare out of the, the produce that we're growing is just like popsicles. You know, right. like pure fruit juice popsicles from all the fresh fruit that we're we're growing here. So you could, you know, either pick fresh fruit, or have a popsicle, um, of you know, have a mulberry, have a guava, have a have a, a pawpaw popsicle. You know, well, just seeing, <laughs> just for folks to be able to see it. Okay, here's something that was just grafted with the tape on it. Here's your two. It's you know, yeah. and now it's up potted. Now it's planted. Yeah. Hey, here's what it looks like when it's pruning. Being able to see all those stages, plus get to see what you can do with it all in one spot. I mean, yeah. where else are you going to replicate that? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you're able to see like our plans. So, oh, uh, dude, I've been jazzed <laughs> up ever since I got here, man. That's yeah. Yeah. The idea. That's definitely part of the idea. It's like, okay, here's what you know. Here's all these different trees that you can grow here in this in this exact climate. Um, and here's the fruit for you to taste. Here's what the tree looks like. You know, come take a, a grafting workshop or a or a pruning workshop or a tree care workshop with us. Learn how to do it. Learn, you know, learn about soil regeneration with us. And then take home a tree. You know, get some compost. Get the tools that you need. So we want to. We're trying to provide like a very complete experience, so that this is not just you know, a place where you come to get food. This is a place that you come to actually learn about earth and, you know, like learn about soil and learn about plants and then learn to replicate what we're doing in whatever space that you have, whether that's, you know, a balcony, a patio, uh, you know, a backyard, a community garden, a school garden, you know, and hopefully like other people start more, you know, farms kind of using our model as an example. Um, so that's, and that's already, you know, that's already happened so many times. Um, there's so many other urban farms that, urban farmers that come here, learn from us, you know, our training program has created, helped create so many urban farms across the LA and Orange County area. Um, excuse the pun, but I mean, the cross pollination of this guy down here, you in Pomona, this guy in Long Beach. I mean, I would imagine there's different you know, climates, even within oh, yeah. this geographical area and plenty to learn from each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, actually, LA is kind of exciting in that way. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of action, like, there's a lot of interest and a lot of action happening around urban gardening and urban farming. And it's, you know, it's had its up and ups and downs. Right now, I feel like the interest is, is going, you know, going up again. Um, and you know, I've been doing this for quite a while, so I've I've seen it and I've learned, you know, figured out what's important about in creating these spaces to keep them going, you know, because so many so many of these projects start and and crash, um, and so I'm, I'm trying to got help and guide other people so that you know these projects have longevity. So I thought the story of the property itself and the original intent was just kind of lent itself to such a great story, how this area of town was like laid out and what the intended purpose was. So if you could yeah. fill us in on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, the, if you come, when you come here, the, like I mentioned earlier, the lot is kind of like very unique and it's, it's very skinny. It's very long. Um, and there's, you know, all of my neighbors have the same type of lot. Uh, and if you look back in the, you know, the history pages, um, these lots were actually created as homestead lots. So, you know, when, when real estate developers were in the 1920s, were advertising, you know, people to the, to people in the East, East Coast to come and move out to California, it was almost like this agricultural, you know, dream vision of like, hey, like, come out to California, like, you know, it never, it's always warm here. Uh, you can grow food year round and, you know, you can get one of these homestead lots. You can have your house, you'll have your house in the front 
You can have your vegetable garden behind that. You can have your chickens behind that, and you can have your one. Chickens are still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, chickens are still here, and uh, and you know maybe you can have your dairy cow. Um, so all of this whole area was was actually originally developed like that, and you still see, you know, a lot of the infill development has happened in these homestead lots. So now one homestead lot has turned into nine townhomes. Um, so, you know, there's just a couple of these lots left in this city. And uh, most of the people, I, or like, I would, not most of them, but like a number of people who have them, uh, you know, have gotten them because they, they want to have a garden or they want to have animals. Like one of my neighbors here just has like hundreds of <laughs> animals on, on his lot. Um, so we're, we're, we're trying to, we're, you know, kind of fitting back into that original vision. Of course, that original vision also had a lot of kind of, you know, violence and theft of land tied right. up into it. So we don't necessarily identify with the homestead idea. Um, what we're trying to do is, is really, again, like create a space that people who don't have access to, um, you know, just the beauty of, of plants, the beauty of feeling like that, that peaceful feeling that you get when you're, when you're sitting and smelling flowers and seeing greenery and there's butterflies dancing all around you and there's birds singing, like we're trying to bring that experience to people who just don't have access to it. Right. Virtually everybody else we talked to, you came from a much different space or you started out life as, hey, I'm gonna go to college and do this whole yeah. tech career. And then here we are. Um, <laughs> It's it's the story of our of everything that we do at Bootstrap Farmer. It seems everybody that we oh, talk yeah. to, tech, medical, finance, uh, some other, you know, corporate job per yeah. se, and everybody is has this look of happiness and fulfillment that we get to come to. <laughs> I don't know if it's as justified as this <laughs> in a lot of cases. Just I'm I'm a big fan, so it's. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I I started. Um, I started my adult life, uh, you know, in a computer science program in college. Uh, I graduated in a com from a, with a computer science degree. Uh, but I, even, you know, by the time I finished college, I realized there wasn't wasn't the thing that I wanted to to do with my life. I feel like most people, and it could be as simple as an article or a picture or a farm visit or even just a plant that they seem to care for do you remember specifically the one certain spark that maybe adjusted that path that's an interesting question um i don't know that i had like one specific spark i think um you know it was when i was in school um one of the things that uh started me on this path was that i got involved with uh a group that was trying to restart a community garden that had been closed down by the administration. So this land had been had been vacant, and there was all these. Actually, the previous group had planted all these fruit trees, and um, some of them were still alive. And so, a group of students got together and and were trying to bring this garden back to life. We were we were kind of like you know illegally. We had this two hundred foot long hose tied up to a spigot that happened to be on the back of a nearby building and we were hand watering everything totally like not sanctioned by the university that sounds um, like the best way to go <laughs> <laughs> and eventually we got it sanctioned and and now it's still it's still there um uh but just being in that you know i would go there because we would have we'd be hand you know we'd have a schedule of people that would go in to hand water every day and I'd go there by myself in the middle of my my school day, and you know I'd be watering the plants and and I just remember like almost every other time that I'd go and water, there would be hummingbirds that were coming and like kind of cooling down in like the the mist of the hose, right? You know, so they would come down and they would just like dance in front of me and they would they would take a little shower in the in the water and. And just being, you know, in that really like secluded space, it was kind of nestled among the trees and having that that 
time of quiet. Um, I think th those experiences really set for me that like, okay, this is something that I want to have in my life. Um, and that was, you know, at the end of school, I decided this is something I actually want to pursue. Um, I think it's just interesting that even then you had a watering schedule. And then, <laughs> so I, I was here a good hour before you got here and I, I was just uh, able to absorb every, everything I could within that. But the organization that you have here, mm. being rooted in that fundamental watering schedule, I mean, it <laughs> seems like a small thing, yeah. but it seems like you've really been able to carry that out and um, it shows, it shows. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, we've, uh, especially in the past year, uh, we, we've we developed a really uh, solid core team here. Um, so we have, you know, we have Faye, who is our, our farm manager, and she's here five days a week. And Sage, who's our, uh, who's another one of our farmers, and he's a, you know, he's a he's a six foot four like Olympic weightlifter guy, and so he does all the like heavy moving and you know any like construction and digging. You know, we need to dig holes or um, so he takes care of all that that kind of stuff. And then we have Sima, who who helps us coordinate the events. Um, she's also our herbalist. And then Lola is our beekeeper. We have uh, right now we have four beehives, honey beehives in the back, and she's also uh, developing a, a native bee hotel, and we're planting native bee habitat. Um, so we're you know the I, the intention is to really um, well part of it is you know part of the intention of this farm is to actually pay people to do this work because Thank so you. so much of like the urban farming world is volunteer and you know young people of color cannot be volunteers you know or I, I don't to for this to be accessible to, to to that group of people it can't be through volunteerism only you know so we want I wanted to pay people uh, to do this and I want to show actually that this is something that can be developed as a as a business uh, or at least a, a source of income for people. Right. Uh, one other thing that Faye mentioned that I found interesting and what I wished everybody would do is that somebody has been designated a, a, a documentarian oh, of yeah. the whole project. Yeah. And yeah. I'd love to hear just, yeah. you know, for, for my own giggles, <laughs> yeah. know, how, how are you viewing that? Because that's, that's basically my job at Bootstrap is to document, you know, there's product shots, but then there's also the evolution of what we do. And I know that when I started my farm, I mean, it was obnoxious how many pictures I was taking, <laughs> but how often, and even today through the media, you know, we, we go back to those original pictures. So I think it's very important that everybody document their farm. So yeah. if you had any advice for some folks out there, that'd be great. Yeah. I forgot to mention, we also have Melly on our team, who's our documentarian. And, you know, as an organization, you know, we, we do have a message that we're trying to share. Um, we share that through our social media accounts. Um, we're trying to, you know, just let people know that we're here, and 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 you know, like you've you've come here, you've experienced the the beauty of the space that we're trying to create. We're trying to share that beauty even through photos and videos. Um, and so Melly's Melly's job is just to to document, you know, the document the beauty that we're creating, document the the community that we're creating and you know take photos of the people that are here to uh, document the events that we're having. I love watching the event pictures because I, I'm so pleased that you always get a bunch of people to come out and it, it seems like it's a, a heavy rotation of new people and mm -hmm. people that I've seen a, a couple of different events. I, I love seeing that hopefully they're bringing friends or something. That's, that's yeah. the impression I get when I keep up with you guys and I, I love being able to watch that from afar. Yeah and we're really trying to you know one of the things that I didn't like about the previous iteration of this farm where we were focused on vegetable production was I didn't feel comfortable having new people come in here, you know, because there was, there was such a tight system that we had going that, you know, if we had groups of people in here, if we wanted to have an event, you know, it was just easy for someone to accidentally like, you know, kick something or step on something that was important to us. Um, and so now we're trying, you know, this new version of the, of the farm is much more visitor friendly. 
uh, and and you know we're putting in designated pathways and we're planting a lot more perennials that are more forgiving and we're not you know we're not really concerned that much with oh okay if this you know this plant you know we're not selling the produce of most of the plants that we're planting so uh we're more comfortable with people coming in here and and not just more comfortable like we want people to come in here right um so we're designing the the space for visitors for students or which means bathroom facilities and wash stations and exactly uh, i know you guys have a storefront and yeah there's so much more to having like right here you're very fortunate to have the parking that you do right i know for a lot of people that have people out to the farm it's like well they all came and parked next to the road now there's all these ruts yeah. and that's an issue so it's that that's fortunate i mean i also noticed that you have a walk-in cooler to take care of the refrigeration needs and the wash yeah. stations i mean i'd I really feel that as you had do have visitors, I think you've incorporated, you know, just basic needs that people have when they come and visit. Yeah. Anybody. Yeah. You, I mean, we kind of, I, I've kind of envisioned it as like a large outdoor home. Right. You know, so all the facilities that you need, you want to be comfortable. Right. We're going to have, we want to have those facilities, but just in an outdoor space where instead of, you know, using a, uh, concrete roof over your head as shade we've got trees overhead and we've got passion fruit vines overhead and we've got plants around we've got flowers around you um, so like even you know part of the the process that we're going through right now is we're going to be putting in you know a number of seating areas so we have like a we're going to have a event seating area a classroom area a, a picnic area we've got one composting toilet we're adding a second composting toilet in the back um, and those are we didn't cheap out on those like oh they're super nice there yeah, it's yeah, like a beautiful out. you know a beautiful space and, right. they, and you know part of that is like people are a little weirded out when they first hear about it so we wanted to make sure that when you walked in it was like clean not just clean like it's it's clean it's really comfortable you know there's no smell at all um, and so it surpasses your expectation right right uh, especially compared to, you know, a lot of farms have porta potties, right? Like, so it's way better than a porta potty. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, and then we're. I, and I promise you, so there's there's a 7 Eleven around the corner. Yeah. I promise you it's better than that. Oh, one. I promise, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I actually prefer our composting toilet to, you know, even a nice indoor toilet. Like, it's actually really nice to use it. Yeah. And, and then, uh, you know, we're putting in. We're putting in electrical actually, hopefully this week. We're putting electrical all the way through the farm. We're going to have, uh, maybe not all, you know, maybe not all farms need this, but as an urban farm, we're putting in Wi-Fi through the whole space too. Cause no, I think for sure. I mean, because pe when people come, they, how else are they going to share if, if they don't have some access? So no, I think it's a great move. Yeah. And we, we actually are going to be offering the space as like uh, almost like a co-work, like office space, you know, so right. you can come here for the day bring your laptop, sit in the, the tent that we've, you know, the 12 by 14 canvas tent we have in the back and set up with a little, with a little chair and a little desk and, and just, you know, work here for the day. You know, like, none of this stuff happens overnight. I mean, I know I've noticed um, lots of solenoids, lots of irrigation. I know that takes oh, a yeah. ton of time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, How long have you been here? We've been here since 2014. Yeah, so there's been a lot of time to develop infrastructure, um, and you know we had to we had to put in you know the electrical for the walk-in cooler, yeah, all the irrigation and the irrigation's probably been redone like you know five times. As it, yeah, as it, as it always is. Yeah, <laughs> it's being redone again in the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, and you know it's a. Uh, that that's the plan right like the plan is to be here so you know the plan is to really is i mean we've been here eight years already um but the plan is to settle in even further and that's that's the idea with planting these these trees and almost for me it's like for me it's almost like a uh act of rebellion almost you know because i'm we're sitting on this property that you know uh, we get we get letters in the mail from developers, oh, you know, imagine. that want to buy the that want to buy the place out, and 
and for me it's it's an act of rebellion to say like yeah i see your letters and i'm fucking planting trees that i need you know i'm planning on these trees being here for the next 30 years so right. <laughs> well i mean i mean right 20 or well 35 feet from us there's a silt fence with a construction area going yeah. down and i love that you know we're not gonna move yeah yeah we're not we're not moving here and you know we have We've got a, we've got these beautiful trees already. Uh, the tree that's in our front yard uh, was, I've, I learned, was actually planted by the uh, lady that used to live next door. There was actually a, a house on the property next door where the construction's happening, um, and a, a woman that lived there um, grew up here, grew up. Uh, I think her family actually owned the whole block mm. at some point. Uh, and what I heard from the, one of the uh, previous people that lived here was that she actually planted that tree. And she planted it, you know, like a hundred years ago. So, you know, to me it just feels like there's a, there's a history that we're, um, that we're adding to. And, uh, you know, I just... Um, and if we don't have these acts of rebellion, everything's just going to be concrete at yeah. some point. And I know that having a farm that you're you're fenced in and you're right in the middle of the town and you can do things and then you can't do things, you know, it it's just, it's still a light to show. I mean, exactly what you guys are doing. Look, come here, learn how to take, maybe you only do this in a couple of square feet at your place. But yeah. at least that, think about, you know, over the years, all the people that's going to come here and just do four, five, maybe a hundred feet on their own, that ex exponentially grows this farm at different satellite programs. And I like that notion that yeah. it all epicentered from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and you know, the, the other part of it for me too, you know, speaking about like concrete and, and housing versus gardens, right? Like, I mean, we're in LA. There's a there's a huge home. I think this is like the homeless capital of the of the country, um, and and so obviously there's an issue for housing, right? And I'm not saying we shouldn't build housing, um, but what I am saying is, you know, we have to look at how we value land, right? Um, and and I want to. Part of what I'm trying to, sh what we're trying to show here is, is that, you know, a open piece of land in the city can be as valuable as a garden at, you know, versus being developed into housing, right? Because on this property, you know, according to the city, there is space for nine units, right? And so what I'm trying to say is, yeah, but also on this property, there is space for, you know, what I'm seeing as potentially like five to six full-time jobs. Uh, there is space for, you know, uh, there's space for this garden that people can create memories in, that people can have birthday parties in, that people can have, hopefully, eventually, weddings in. Uh, there is space for you know, a garden where people can learn about, learn skills and ideas that are important that, you know, all humans should know, you know, like people, I feel like all humans should know how soil functions, how soil eats, how soil drinks water, how trees function, how food tastes, you know, like, I think these are all important understandings that, that we, an important value that we share from this space. So, you know, part of what, again, just part of what I'm trying to say through this space is that, you know, a, a, even just a little piece of land like this in a city that has, you know, so much land, um, it's important to have these tiny, even if they're tiny, like, and spread out, like, it's important to have these spaces um, because of the value that they provide beyond housing and beyond parking lots and beyond, you know, malls, like, there's a, a specialness, and and people feel that when they come here. Oh, it's it's immediate, and even even just sitting here, I'm, you know, we're trying to watch everything, and there's little little butterflies going around, little, <laughs> yeah. little bugs going around. We heard heard the bird, you know, the, the chicken is the chicken, but yeah. I I know that this 
you know, it is a wildlife habitat mm -hmm. as well. You know, and if, if all those goes away, then what? Yeah, I mean, it's also so amazing to see, you know, uh, one of the things that we, uh, we really encourage people is to, you know, if you're putting in a, a garden, also put in just a small pond. And it can literally be, you know, like I have one, I have one in my own patio garden. It's in a steel bucket, you know, that's this big and this tall. Uh, and I've got some water plants in there and I've got some, you know, goldfish in there. And every day, you know, I, I, my, my desk is, is right uh, by that pond outside. And uh, every day, there are multiple birds that come and drink water from that pond and bathe in that pond. And there are bees, you know, honeybees that fly over and I can see them drinking water from the pond. And it's like, you know, the small things like that, like you think about, you think about our urban spaces, like there's literally, and actually this is true for our rural spaces too. The availability of fresh drinking water is almost none. You know, like there's very little fresh drinking water available for wildlife in, in our entire society. You know, water is all trapped in pipes and tubes and, you know, underground, like above ground fresh water is a absolute rarity. Um, and so being, a, just having a small source of fresh water, all sorts of beings are coming in there. You know, we have our cats here too. Our cats drink from our, our, our the ponds that we have. Um, and it's just amazing to see, like, you know, you plant just a couple flowers and all sorts of pollinators come to visit those flowers. You put a couple milkweed plants and all of a sudden you have monarch butterflies coming to visit. Um, and so, you know, just even having these small pockets of gardens throughout the city. Uh, hopefully, you know, my, in my vision, that's not the end of it, but like, I think as a starting point to start having, you know, little spaces that, that can provide, you know, uh, space for birds to hop from here to here right. to here. Um, I think that just is, is, it's important. It's also just a very beautiful thing to, to experience. Right. And when you travel, you always, looking for a rest stop or a, a place to fill up or something like yeah. that. It's no different from them to yeah. have these little islands of, you know, places to feel safe and to yeah. get a drink and splash water on your face. Yeah, it's got to be great for them. And wouldn't it be nice that even our human rest stops were not just, right. you know, McDonald's and Chevron's? Like, wouldn't it be nice if our rest stops were, were gardens where we could, you know, relax, maybe have some fresh fruit, you know, like... Maybe that's the next thing that um, I'm going to develop on. <laughs> right. You had the CSA here. You, you talked about you had the row crops and everything was mm -hmm. set in place. Now you're moving to a, a, a more event space and a more place for people to come. I mean, it's got to be the sky's the limit as far as ideas that just, oh. I mean, just again, <laughs> I come and I get a ton and I think we could spitball ideas all day. Yeah. Um, especially post pandemic people were wanting to get out people wanting to experience something real you know online is great but coming here walking on the ground feeling the soil seeing all the plants i mean it's you can't replace that no so i mean just i'd love to hear some of the ideas i mean cause oh, yeah. I, I heard i heard it when i first got here yeah but um yeah you know, yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so so yeah, we're we're redeveloping about half of the farm, um, and and you know I think I mentioned we're putting in a couple um, seating spaces, gathering spaces. Um, so we're gonna we're hopefully gonna be putting in the middle of the farm like a a two story open air structure, which on the bottom we'll have our walk in cooler and we'll have our we'll have like a a pretty like. A kitchen, you know, but a kitchen that we can also, you know, collectively cook in, maybe have like cooking classes uh, and have our, you know, tool shed and all that stuff on the bottom of that structure. On the top of that structure, uh, it'll just be open. Um, and so, you know, people could have weddings up there. We can have <laughs> yoga classes up there, or sound baths or, <laughs> right. you know, anything of the sort up there. It'll be an open event space. Uh, but then we're also trying to incorporate like fun little things in there, right? So 
you know, yes, there'll be uh, stairs to get up there. Uh, there's also hopefully going to be a rock climbing wall to get up and then a slide to come down. Um, and, and then we've also, you know, dreamed of a zip line. I don't know how feasible that is, but we've dreamed of a zip line to come down to. Never show your liability insurance people this video. <laughs> <laughs> like your rights are just gonna go through the roof. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so we're gonna have the pond, and the pond is gonna have like a little deck that you can kind of dangle your feet into the water. And there's gonna be a beach next to the pond too. Uh, we're gonna have a we have our tent in the back, and the tent is gonna be gonna open up into this meadow, and the meadow is gonna have uh, hammocks all around it, and a library so you can come and. And read a book and so it's like meadow hammocks fruit trees you know the tent is going to have a, a grape arbor over it so that it's totally in the shade of grape and it seems like that's an enormous amount of stuff but after walking the property i totally see it and that's you were talking about half the property there's <laughs> yeah. still all this other there's stuff still, there's still yeah yeah but yeah, no we, I'd, you've definitely got the room for it i mean it'll be it'll be tight but yeah yeah it's all it's, right it's gonna be, we're really looking at like how to just, um, you know, layer. Right. Right, like uh, it doesn't, okay. It's well, like a, with so many things, it's multi-function, multi-use. Yeah, it's a seating area, but also it's a, you know, it's a grape arbor and, and also, um, you know, it can be reconfigured to be some other kind of area. Uh, and, you know, we're gonna have, so we're gonna have like, uh, and, the, and different sizes of spaces too, right? So like the big structure is for like maybe 40 people and then the little patio is for like 10 people and then the classroom area is more for like, you know, 15 to 20 people and the tent is for like eight people and then we have, you know, the, this area in the front here uh, that can fit a, a decent number of people too. So. So we want to be able to fit different sizes. We also want to be able to have, you know, different things going on simultaneously. Um, you know, we're we're putting in, you know, we're going to be putting in speaker systems. So we have music facility. Uh, we're going to have. We're trying to. We're also planning a lot for kids. Um, so some of the ideas were like, you know, we'll have just like little things, right? Like. You can come in and there's a laminated paper that has like different types of leaves on it. And uh, the, you, the kids can go on a scavenger hunt looking for the leaves, you know, the 10 different type of leaves are on there. And if they collect all the leaves, then they get a popsicle from us, something like that. Right. You know, uh, and, and so just a way we're we're trying to when we were when we were developing the plan, we were looking at. Um, what are the ways that we could develop the space so that when people visit here, they immediately have things that they can do without us having to guide them through the space? You know, so like the scavenger hunt will just be there and have instructions and you can pick it up and you can do it. Well, it's like right now, the space lends itself to that because, like I said, there's signs all over the place. Mm -hmm. Not just, hey, this is this variety or this is this bush, but there's points of inspiration, things to do, things to, I think really make you sit back and consider. Mm. Um, it's it's all abound. Uh, I love the Grand Budapest Hotel reference <laughs> in, the, <laughs> yeah, in, the, yeah, in yeah. the background. Um, yeah. So, I mean, al already I, I the scavenger hunt and the exploration is almost pre-built in. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a very natural flow for the, for the yeah. place. We have our wishing tree over here. So you can, you write a wish and, and hang it in our wishing tree. So just you know, developing more of of those. We also have our our little uh, our photo. You know, the we've got some right. thing, some paintings with the face cut out, so you can take photos in there. Um, so yeah, it's just like a lot of little things like that where you can come in and just enjoy yourself. You know, uh, hopefully when you come come to visit, you buy a plant from us. That's but that's just a you know for us that's the icing icing on the cake. Well, yeah, we're, I mean, we're basically just trying to create a space that people can come and enjoy and just kind of disconnect from, you know, the, the stress of the stress of our everyday lives.
And that's what this space is for me too, you know, like there's a lot of stress to maintain this organization and, you know, make sure we have funding and, you know, all the development plans and all the background work um, and, uh, and all the computer work that goes into creating this space. Um, so when I, you know, when I get to be here and just sit and enjoy, uh, that's, that's that same feeling that I'm just trying to bring to, we're trying to bring to other people. Right. You mind if we talk about the high tunnels for a second? That's that's the the, oh, yeah. first, the first time we ever talked <laughs> was um, not the easiest person to get a hold of in the company, but I, it got kicked to me that hey, we have a problem with uh, delivery. So the the whole thing with the hoop house is getting it to that last mile, right? It's <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. We can build it, we can package it, we can ship it, you know, from the Dallas area to here, but it's always that last final hub of getting it to the last stop and I've been trying to think I can't remember exactly how we got that last mile I, I think we tried to uh, hire a hot shot to come over but at the same time maybe the hub figured it out I what wound up happening uh, they just they brought it here on a flatbed and then we uh, broke it down right because they couldn't the only problem the problem was actually just you know what lowering it to the ground that was the catalyst for us to because we used to pay for um, the drop decks. Uh, and half the time, no matter how much we paid, they would show up without the drop deck. So then it was like, no more drop decks. And we were the only company doing it. Okay. And now we know why. Okay. So it's like, <laughs> oh, we're going to get that extra service. And it wound up not happening. <laughs> so exactly how you broke it down is how we instruct people to do it now. Okay. It's not difficult. you no, know. It's, you know but uh, now that people know to expect it, we've had a better outcome. So it's my understanding that you, uh, a couple of people were hired on to put that up for you the yeah the first one so the first one we put in uh like a year and a half ago or two years ago um i think a year and a half ago um and uh, i was just like very busy at the time so we hired i just hired some friends to, to put it up so yeah so, so the second one we had our we already had our our new team together um so i just i hired the one of those guys one of my those friends to come back and uh, just help us get started because uh, he'd already done it, and then we we did it as a team. And uh, you know, I wouldn't. It's like it's a it's a it's a lot of little steps. That's it. You know, it's a lot. It's not there's, hard. There's about seven things, but you do those seven things over and over, over, and again, over for again for a long time. Yeah, and I was definitely like, you know, just that much drilling through metal uh, put a strain on my shoulder. Right. Um, but. Just the uh, the whole kit is so well put together, and you know it's not like definitely not rocket science. It's just it's just the work of of you know screwing everything together. And by the by the time you figure something out on one side, you're an expert. Yeah. By the time you get to the other end, wall, so Yeah, yeah. To leave your home, get on a plane, fly forever, you know, <laughs> <laughs> fly forever, get here, and then to like see not only one but two side by side yeah. it man that's just for me personally it's it's very very cool to see it and to be a, a part of the farm you know it's i'll always have a presence here in some way or another and bootstrap will always have a presence here and i don't think we would have met had we not have trouble with the delivery <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah, i mean so, so everything works that's out true. to be the best i know yeah. i know my life has been blessed by being here and getting to meet you and we've talked a couple of times throughout the years um I think I mentioned to you one time, you know, I, I enjoy, I like you um, kind of go deep on some of the, on some of your blogs and the social media stuff. And it's, it's always really good pause for thought. Mm. And I really appreciate it. Do you feel like, and I hope you do, that you're an ambassador to farming, an ambassador to, there's many facets, I think, that you have a voice. How do you approach that? How do you think about that and process it? Mm. I'll wait for that one. Yeah, we'll wait for that. Yeah, for me, you know, it's it's really important that, uh, you know, for me, farming is not. I think I think a lot of a lot of people, the way they express, you know, farming and the importance of farming for them is is there's a lot of this idea of like independence and and self reliance. Um, sovereignty you know and i i mean sovereignty is a word that i i do identify it with um but I, I for me you know 
one of the major lessons that I've learned being in the garden uh, and, and being with plants and being with soil and fungi and birds and butterflies, you know, like for me, the lesson has not been so much about independence. You know, the, for me, the lesson has been that this is, you know, I've, I perceive the garden as one body and I'm a part or an organ of that body. Um, and so for me, you know, that was a very, that was a, a 180 degree switch from everything that I was taught in school, everything I understood, you know, um, throughout my whole life until I got to have these experiences. Uh, and for me, that shift in perspective uh, was very relaxing, you know. Um, I think the that self-reliance and that independence mindset to me is very stressful um, and very isolating. Uh, and so, you know, to move for me, like my, you know, I want to. The reason I I choose to express myself the way I do and and why I, you know, why I express myself often is that I'm just like wanting to kind of counter some of the message to counter like you know most of the messaging that right. we receive whether it's in farming or gardening or not right uh, because i feel like that messaging is very uh constricted to to most people well i, I don't mind sharing with you that um a lot of times i feel i feel like i never know everything I need to know about a subject to have a strong opinion one way. Anybody that's ever known me, you know, I'm pretty middle of the road, you know, I just, <laughs> just want to do my thing and I want everybody to be happy. I don't want to, I don't want to upset anybody, but at the same time, I'm not going to, you know, placate, you know, somebody just for the, yeah. for the necessity of it. Rarely do I stop and listen. So I'm, <laughs> if, if it, if it's only just for me, for you to have a message that doesn't turn me off and make me run the opposite way, <laughs> I think you do it in a, like multiple times you've made me stop and think about maybe I'm thinking about this wrong, maybe I'm thinking about this from a different perspective or whatever the case may be. It's it's rare for me to stop and listen to anything. Mm. So um, I just really appreciate it. Oh. And I would encourage anybody, no matter where you fall <laughs> in any belief system that you have, I think you you do a wonderful job of expressing what you've learned and what you feel and what you've um, you know maybe have seen outside of the country and what you've witnessed both in history and current events. Uh, you, I just like the way you break it down. So I want to thank you for that, and it's changed my mind a couple things. It's made me think. Well, there's more to this than what I you know perceived, uh, just because I hadn't been exposed to it. And um, I don't know. I just think there's a lot there for people interested in hearing a perspective without like feeling like you got yelled at. at <laughs> yeah. that's, that's that's where I was trying to get. I I don't feel like I don't feel like you're getting on to me <laughs> for not knowing something. That's that's what I was wanting to say. Yeah. Well, I uh, think I mean that was a long way to get there. <laughs> no, I, thank you for sharing that, and I, I appreciate it so much because that you know, yeah, I mean that. I just feel like so much of, I don't know, the conversation that I hear out in the world is like, there's just the two sides, and they're just yelling at each and other. we're not budging <laughs> at all. And yeah. I, I, love, I love your perspective on the homestead or some of the things to think a little bit deeper on and to reflect a little bit more, because I, I do feel like the homesteaders get into it for so many reasons, and some are great. Mm. Some are not for me, you know, it may, may be for them, but I think the historical significance, that's something I've missed in the past. So learning that through you, man, it's, it's really made me think about you know, what are we really doing? What are we really doing here? How did we get here? How are these lands getting transformed, you know, not that long ago? Yeah. And how, uh, in a lot of cases, they still are being allocated incorrectly. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I think, you know, 
for me, one of the things is I don't believe like anyone is stupid. You know, I don't believe that people hold the views that they hold because they're they're stupid. I believe that people hold the views, wh whatever whoever it is, right? Whatever whatever your views are, you hold those views because of of some experience that you've had, right? And every experience is true, right? Like your experience is always true. Um, you know, your interpretation of that experience may be colored by different things that different influences of, of your life so for me you know everyone has some some truth to their experience or has truth to their experience and and so it's just like realizing that you know we we have to have a conversation that is that is around like what all of our experiences are Right, and then finding like commonalities between our experiences. Um, one of you know, like one example, just like the climate change conversation. One of the things that I find real funny, right, is that one side says, uh, you know, one side says humans are causing climate change. The other side says, no, climate change just happened, right? And for some reason, like, there's not the connection that like. Or so one side says humans are causing climate change. One side says climate change is natural, right? And then there's not a connection that like, okay, this that one this definition of nature for me is really weird, and that humans are part of this whole thing. So like, yes, the climate changes all the time, and yes, you know, human certain humans could be causing the climate to change faster, and that is also you know a natural process but not necessarily like a process that we all want to happen you well know? you could you could, uh, <laughs> you could you could make that across many different things people are <laughs> believing these days it i think i think about this play and i keep referring to you know i i have never once during this interview called this your farm <laughs> because from moment one i felt like this was everybody's farm mm -hmm. similar to if you had prepper, a homesteader, this sounds like a bad joke. If you had a prepper, a homesteader, and a rabbi walk into a bar, I mean, they, anybody that comes here with any interest in growing or whatever niche you want to have would find immense value here. Mm -hmm. That's the connection point. Yeah. Now, whether they're doing it because they're running away from society or they're just wanting to have a better life or they just need a change in their life and this is a natural progression for a lot of folks. This is the commonality. And this yeah. is, you know, by and large, the podcast for Bootstrap Farmers, like my own little personal, I get to go out and do the things that I feel like I need to do, right? I mean, we're not trying to sell, we talked about the greenhouses, but we're not trying to sell greenhouses here. Mm -hmm. But this is where I get to explore what makes me and hopefully somebody else a better person because they learned from somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, it's um, uh, I think it's really important just to hear other people's stories, and uh, hey, you know, for for us, like I think part of our story is just, you know, like you said, this is um, part of our story is that this land is not ours, you know, that we are, we are this land, and so. When you come here, I think, you know, part of our our message is that, like, you know, this is, you can come here for whatever your reasons are. We're not going to tell you how to think. We're not going to tell you what to do. It's more just like, this is what we do, you know. And as a group, as a community, as an organization, this is how we think. This is what, you know. These are some of the things that are shared beliefs. Um, and this, what you see, right, what you see physically is a result of that, right? Like it's a result of our organization. It's a result of, of the values and the beliefs that we share. Uh, and it's a result of the work that we've done together. So whether you come here and see that and say, oh, this is cool. I'm going to I'm going to try to take home some of the val these values and beliefs 
right? Because I see how they've they've manifested physically in this garden, and I want to have a garden like this, right? Whether you say that, or whether you say, ah, this is a bunch of hogwash, I just want a pomegranate tree. <laughs> I don't care, you know? That's up to you. I would even <laughs> take it just one little step further and be like, let's say you didn't take anything, but you're able to leave behind a label. Like, I'm, yeah, I know Till, but I don't live my life <laughs> you know, dedicated to this label. Yeah. And it, yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm going to get in hot water about a lot of things. <laughs> Stuff from this one, but, you know, again, I, I, I just want people to grow, man. You know, <laughs> yeah. and I want them to get together and, and have a good time and fix some, some issues. Like, I can't, I would imagine that the community that you have here and that's working here, I'm sure not all of them think, think exactly the same. No. Nor should they. No. No. No, there's just, there's, you know, I mean, we have conversations. Like, we have, we, uh, uh, we had a long conversation about, um, you know, here in California, uh, white sage is very popular you know these wrapped up bundles of white sage and and white sage is is being poached from the hillsides like people actually go they tie you know old white sage plants to their truck and they rip them out of the ground and they make these bundles and sell them to high-end stores here and i think also across the country um and so you know we're propagating white sage in the nursery um and we had a long conversation as a team about, uh, you know, if are we are we contributing um, to this commodification of this you know plant that's sacred to Native Californians by selling this plant? Should we sell this plant? Um, you know, if we are going to sell it, you know, do do we have some responsibility in the way that we sell it? Um, and you know, we had different views and and. The goal was not like to figure out who's right, but just to come up with uh, a situation that everyone felt comfortable with. So, you know, if you want to know, what we do now is we do sell the white sage. It's <laughs> urban farming. <laughs> um, but we're, what we're doing is uh, there's a sign, there's going to be a sign, you know, explaining like the realities of white sage and um and then we're donating you know half of the sale price to a local indigenous organization that is working on on uh restoring you know native plants to to their their ecosystem well i i think it's a good exercise and let's who's to say whether that decision's right or wrong it's it's you just said it you know not everybody agreed but that was the solution you came up for that topic. But I think it's a an exploration of there's endless topics out there that, uh, frankly, uh, people like me, they're as they're just going about their day, they're not thinking about stuff. They haven't been exposed to it. They're just going about and doing whatever they're going to do. But I think having that conversation with your folks, maybe that the next time that that comes up, there's a process in which we make that decision. Yeah. So over and I, I would imagine that's going to happen more often than not. Yeah. Yeah, the process is really important, right? Like, uh, I mean, even that, even that whole conversation was, it was something new for us. And it was, uh, we saw this as like, oh, okay, this is like, we're going through a practice of how to have these conversations in the future, you know? Um, and, and if, you know, it went, I feel like it went fairly well. And next time we'll, we'll, we'll take another crack at it. That's all you can do. That's all, all, <laughs> yeah. all anybody can hope for. So it's uh, more than obvious that you're taking care of the local community. You, you could argue even <laughs> greater Los Angeles to a degree, but I think you also have uh, programs that other people can participate in this farm. You know, mm -hmm. the people listen to this all over the country, all over the world in some cases. You know, how can people check in on you and support you, even if it's just a very small thing? Yeah. Um... So, you know, we, we we do view the work that we do as having both a local and a and a 
you know, expanded impact. So we have programs that are locally focused for people that are nearby us and can visit the farm. We also have uh, programs that are more nationally or globally focused. Um, so if you want to get involved with us, one of the things you can do is sign up as a member of our organization. Um, to become a member, you would be donating at least $5 a month. Um, and we have members all across the country. We have members, some members internationally too. Um, and as a member, you'd be, of course, supporting, you know, the work that we do here, um, but also supporting the work that we do in, you know, crafting this message and, and, and sharing the message that our farm is creating. Uh, and also, uh, we want to, you know, help other people no matter where they are. So you can join our, we do a monthly online gardening lesson. So as a member, you can join that, you know, it's on Zoom. It's also available as a recording. Um, so you'll, you can, you'll get those lessons. You also join our, our online membership community. Um, and so part of that is, you know, there's a membership portal where you can watch the classes and see the recordings, but also answer questions, you know, share your experiences. Um, so it's, it's, you know, and it's, it's a, that, that part of it is something new that we've started. It's developing, um, and people are getting more and more active on there. Um, so that's, that's, yeah, that's the way to, to get involved with us. We're also working on, um, kind of expanding our other programming, like the beekeeping, uh, lessons and the and herbal workshops to be, you know, to be, have some kind of online format as well. Uh, and maybe possibly, hopefully we will be starting to ship plants from the nursery out. Uh, in the near future, so look out for that. Um, that's just like a whole other thing that I am still learning about. So we're trying to figure out how to do it. All the shipping, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the yeah. big shipping dilemma. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, this is I think uh, L.A. Proper's uh, our third largest concentration of listeners. So there is quite a bit of folks that would oh. be listening to this okay. local. So we would be doing a disservice if we didn't talk about how they could come out. Yeah, yeah. If you're nearby, uh, we're open. Farms open Tuesday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. You can come by anytime. Don't need an appointment. Uh, you'll find one of us here, probably Faye. Um, so if you want to just come and like check the space out, buy plants, you can do that any of those days. Um, if you want to get involved, you know, in a more, uh, if you want to learn with us, then we have a couple different options. Um, if you want to come every week, you can be part of our farmer training program which uh, basically you come at least one day a week and just work with the team, do whatever we're doing. Um, if you want to just, you know, if you can't commit to that, then as a, at, a, at the $10 a month level, you can also come to our Saturday, our, our Saturday gardening workshop that's included with the membership. If you're not a member, you can just pay for a ticket to come to those workshops. That's one Saturday a month. We have our bee club that also meets one Saturday a month. Uh, if you want to learn about honey beekeeping and native bees, everyone thinks honey bees are going extinct. They're not. Native bees are going extinct. So we're we're really trying to balance. Thank you for that. <laughs> in uh, in the bee club, that it's about all bees. We do have honey bees because of course honey bees are amazing. Um, and then uh, we're starting. We're hopefully going to be starting a, a like a herbal monthly program too where you learn, learn about different herbs and how to process them. So that's something to look forward to. Um, yeah, and you know, anyone can become a member, local or, or global. Um, that's actually, the members form a substantial part of our, of our uh, funding. And, and members also like, you know, help us not be reliant on grants. We don't actually, really apply for grants like sometimes people approach us and offer us grants so we take them but um, we're trying to be as um, we're trying to be financially like dependent on our members because our members are people that align with what we do and our message and that means that I don't need to be shy about you know speaking we don't need to be shy about speaking our mind right and so that's what we really want. You know, we want to be 
accountable to the people that are supporting us uh, and not be accountable to, you know, big corporations or foundations. So um, that's part of our whole funding structure is, you know, we we support ourselves by by selling plants, by offering classes and workshops. And then, you know, we get a, a good amount of support just from from people who align with what we do, who align with what we say, um, and who aren't afraid to like be bold, you know, right in that message. Well, I've been impacted on multiple ways, both through the friendship and, like I said, the reading what you have to say, and then especially visiting here. I, I just hope anybody gets any takeaway from this conversation, some of the pictures that we're going to show. But man, it's been been priceless man i just can't thank you enough for letting me come crash for half a day and uh, i hope to have both myself and you know bootstrap can continue to serve you in any capacity in the future and just thanks for having us out yeah very happy to to actually meet one of the team and you you know you particularly and uh and i gotta say you know just just for a little plug uh because every year we were losing you know, lot, we grow a lot of subtropical plants and, and actually in Pomona, we're in a pretty cold area for California. So every winter we were losing a lot of our trees because of how cold it gets here specifically. And because of these two greenhouses, our, we, haven't, we didn't lose any trees this I winter. Love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, we only needed even to put a small heater in there. Uh, that just turned on at night for a couple hours to keep the temperatures up a few degrees. So it's been a major, uh, had a huge financial impact for us. And uh, I, I love it when they pay for themselves. It <laughs> yeah. makes me very yeah. happy. Yeah. yeah. So, I would notice when I was in there, you know, I love how we wrap stuff up. In the, the, the <laughs> keep going. <laughs> but I noticed when I was in there, the, the sidewalls are down and there's still quite a breeze in there. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we just keep the doors open and it's pretty nice. Yeah. But. Well, They'll go up once it gets hot. <laughs> well, again, man, thank you for everything. I'm going to let you all get back to work. Lots to do, and I'll see you next time I come around. Yeah, great. Thanks, man. Thank you. <laughs>